In a certain sense, the church knows very little about the Blessed Virgin. No original pictures of her exist. No one ever uh, wrote a biography of her life. And apart from a few mentions in the New Testament, no incidents of her life are known. In fact, the church knows very little about Mary's life story, but the church knows about Mary's true identity, how she lived, her important role in the divine plan of redemption and the drama of sacred history. To these belong the origin of her perpetual virginity, her selflessness, and her divine motherhood. About the end, well, the church really doesn't have to know about her from history, except that Mary, the mother of the Lord, is the most perfect fruit and work of his redemption. And for if the content of Mary's life is known, something can be said about the outcome and the fruit of that life. And so back in 1950, it was the holy year, Pope Pius XII infallibly proclaimed that the Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, after completing her earthly course, was assumed both body and soul into heavenly glory. And Mary, human nature, was fully restored and uh, glorified. That brings us uh, to today's feast day. One thing, when we look at the scriptures, when we look at the Bible, we find the, the real Mary. And we notice that she's always close to Jesus. Of course, Mary's with Jesus from the first moment of conception until his last breath on Calvary. The first time we see Mary is at the Annunciation. And we find the first recorded words of Mary in the Bible, let it be done to me according to your will. And by, say, by saying yes to the angel's invitation, Mary becomes the first disciple, the first one to say yes. And actually, when we think about it, she becomes the first missionary by bringing Christ out into the world. And that's what we call the visitation. Mary going to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who is now pregnant with St. John the Baptist. Of course, then we see Mary in Bethlehem at the birth of Jesus and all that goes with it, the flight into Egypt, and back to uh, Bethlehem. And we are informed how Mary was in the temple for Jesus' uh, circumcision. Then Mary appears with Jesus making that pilgrimage uh, to the temple in Jerusalem and then losing Jesus and finding him among the so-called experts uh, in uh, the temple. And um, he says, she, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? And then we get a glimpse into what Mary's life was like. She sa it says in the Bible, all this is from the Bible, she said, Mary kept all these things and reflected on them in her heart. Then Mary's at uh, Cana, where Jesus performed his first public miracle. Interestingly enough, these are the last time Mary's words are recorded in um, the Bible. Do whatever he tells you to do. 
when we pray to Mary, she always defers us to Jesus and says, you know, do what he tells you to do because he is the way, the life, and the truth. She speaks divine wisdom. Then we see Mary at the end standing at the foot of the cross. Here, the biblical Mary is the picture of a suffering uh, mother. One with him and in his mission until uh, the end. In the Bible, we read how Mary was always finding a place uh, for Jesus. That was the story of her life. Mary was always finding a place for Jesus to be nurtured, to be served, and to be adored. She was always finding a place for Jesus to shine. Yet Mary did all this in the same war ladding circumstances uh, that we uh, face. The challenge is, like Mary, we must strive to find a place for Jesus in our work, in our daily routine. We must uh, find a place for Jesus even when none is obvious. A place for Jesus in our pain, our differences, our success, our failures. We must always strive to let uh, Jesus in our lives. Be, be, let, it, let us be aware of his uh, presence. That is the challenge uh, we face today imitating Mary, imitating her virtues, especially the way she heard the word of God and kept it, how she stayed close uh, to Jesus all through her life. And I think of um, this is all possible because of the grace of God and how God told Moses when he summoned him to take charge of the Israelites, lead them through the desert, see Pharaoh and all that. He said to him, go, go out with the strength that I have given you. 